the court instructs the jury that negligence is the failure to exercise for the protection of others the care and caution that should be exercised by the ordinarily prudent person under the same circumstances. The failure of a bailee to take any measures to safeguard the property entrusted to the bailee as are customarily used in the community by an ordinarily careful institution fairly comparable in size and other conditions with the bailee or the doing of something which such comparable institution would not have done under all the circumstances of the case is negligence. The court instructs the jury that the burden of proof is upon the plaintiff in this case to establish all the material allegations of the complaint by a preponderance of the evidence. By burden of proof is meant the obligation resting upon the jury or parties who assert a proposition that such party or parties establish the proof by a preponderance of the evidence. By preponderance of the evidence is meant that evidence which is most convincing and satisfactory to you, the members of the jury, and which you believe is a truthful account of the matters in controversy between the parties. You are further instructed that if plaintiff by his testimony has established the material allegations of the complaint, a presumption is raised that the defendant failed in its duty of care. It then becomes incumbent upon the defendant to show by a preponderance of the evidence that the loss was not caused by any negligence on its part. You are instructed that any negligence or carelessness which you believe has been established by a preponderance of the evidence on the part of the defendant bank, unless such negligence or carelessness was the direct proximate cause of the loss, if any, complained of by plaintiff, that such carelessness or negligence cannot be considered by you in arriving at your verdict. The court instructs the jury that proximate cause is that cause which in natural and continued sequence, unbroken by any efficient intervening cause, produced the result complained of and without which that result would not have occurred. In other words, the proximate cause of an injury is the direct cause of the injury. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, these instructions which the court gives you are to govern you in reaching your conclusion on the evidence which has been presented to you in the case. The, the jury are, of course, the exclusive judges of this of all questions of fact, and you are also the sole judges of the weight of the evidence and the credibility of the witnesses. As to the principles of law involved, you are to be governed by the instructions of the court. At the outset, I will caution you not to select out of these instructions any single instruction, nor a portion of any instruction alone, but you must consider all of the, inst of the instructions as a whole and regard each of them in the light of all the evidence in the case. If in these instructions any rule, direction, or idea be stated more than once or in varying ways to emphasize that uh, no emphasis there is intended. The order in which the instructions are given has no significance as to their relative importance. It is my duty to state to you the law applicable to the case and it is your duty, unaided by any suggestion from me, to pass upon all questions of fact. You will understand that in this charge, this court is in the manner expressing any, opi uh, any opinion on the weight of the evidence or any part of it or on the truth or falsity of any witness's testimony or that any alleged fact in the case is or is not proven. If anything that I have done or said during the trial in ruling on objections or questioning a witness or in any other way seemed to you to so indicate, you should disregard such indication completely. However, your power of judging the, of the, evidence, the effect of evidence is not arbitrary. It is to be exercised with legal discretion and in subordination to the rules of evidence. The court cautions you to distinguish carefully between the facts testified to by the witnesses. The court instructs the jury that the jury must also carefully consider the statements made by counsel in their arguments as to what facts have been proven. You should not consider as evidence any statement made by counsel on either side during the trial unless such statement is made as an admission 
or stipulation conceding the existence of a fact or facts. Okay. Very good.